action I'm announcing today is about keeping families together. He's trying to appeal to the open border crowd because his campaign is failing so badly. He's trying to cobble together. Joe Biden's open border policies have led to more than 11 million people entering our country illegally. Joe Biden's first day in office, he used executive orders to eliminate all of the effective border policies that were put into place by President Trump, including an illegal immigrant from Ecuador who just raped a 13-year-old girl. Joe Biden granting mass amnesty. So this is going to be a total disaster. The recent Supreme Court ruling has ignited a contentious legal battle between Texas and the Biden administration regarding border policies. In a narrow 5-4 to four decision, the court's verdict holds immense significance as both sides fiercely debate their constitutional rights. Texas asserts its autonomy under Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the U.S. Constitution, despite the court's stance. Conversely, the Biden administration is leveraging this ruling to seek the dismissal of the entire case, intensifying the clash between the Department of Homeland Security and the Lone Star State. This pivotal decision sets the stage for a high-stakes confrontation with far-reaching legal consequences. Border battles escalate. Governor Greg Abbott isn't holding back after the Supreme Court's latest move. He shot off a letter straight to the Biden administration, making it crystal clear that Texas isn't backing down on its right to defend itself under the U.S. Constitution. Despite the court's decision, Abbott's calling out the feds for what he calls a failure to protect Texas from what he flat-out labels an invasion. He's adamant that Texas has every right to protect its people and its turf. This has ratcheted up tensions big time between Texas and Biden's crew, setting the stage for an all-out legal throwdown. In the aftermath of his executive order a couple of weeks ago, uh, there's been absolutely no slowing down of people coming across the border illegally. We're building a wall. We have the National Guard on the border. They are building hundreds of miles of this razor wire. Even Biden suggested uh, in his remarks today uh, that illegal immigration is down. There's been only one thing that slowed uh, the crossings on the border, and that's the resistance that Texas has put up. Barrier that, de that denies illegal entry, and they arrest anybody who does enter illegally. Team Biden's using that narrow 5-4 to four Supreme Court vote to try and boot Texas's claims out of court altogether. So this isn't just a legal showdown, it's a knockdown, drag out over core principles like state power versus federal control. It's a pivotal moment in this whole Texas border mess with both sides hunkering down for what looks like a long, nasty legal brawl. Let's rewind a bit to see how we got here. The Supreme Court's call was about tossing a temporary ban on the U.S. Border Patrol messing with Texas's sea wire, those sharp fences they've strung up along 29 miles of Eagle Pass. Texas first went to bat in the lower courts, scoring a timeout, aka a TRO, to keep their sea wire intact, except for when someone's life's on the line. But that win was temporary, just setting the stage for more legal wrangling. This isn't just about some wire. It's a full-blown legal cage match over who controls what at the border, and it's got big implications for how states and the feds dance together. This whole saga is a screaming headline in the news and a heavyweight bout in the halls of power. He's trying to appeal to the open border crowd because his campaign is failing so badly, he's trying to cobble together. Joe Biden's open border policies have led to more than 11 million people entering our country illegally. Joe Biden's first day in office, he used executive orders to eliminate all of the effective border policies that were put into place by President Trump, including an illegal immigrant from Ecuador who just raped a 13-year-old girl. Joe Biden granting mass amnesty. So this is going to be a total disaster. Legal roller coaster. Texas isn't letting go of its sea wire without a f So they went to court asking for a preliminary injunction to stop the Border Patrol and Biden's crew from yanking out their precious wire while the whole legal drama unfolded. At first, Texas scored a win with a temporary restraining order keeping their sea wire intact, except for dire medical emergencies, of course. But hold on, the plot thickens. Even though the judge agreed with Texas on a bunch of points, like how the feds didn't make a solid case for why they needed to snip the wire, the court still turned down Texas's request for that full-on preliminary injunction. Texas didn't waste a minute. They took their gripes straight up to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, 
asking for that injunction again to keep things as they were while they duked it out in court. And guess what? Texas nailed it. The Fifth Circuit came through, granting the injunction and letting Texas keep their barrier all set up while they took their beef higher. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. The Supreme Court didn't swoop in to decide whether Texas should get that preliminary injunction for good. Their role was about this temporary stopgap the Fifth Circuit threw Texas's way to keep things chill during the appeal. So what's next? Well, it's a wild ride through the legal jungle, with Texas hanging tight to their sea wire and the feds itching to make moves. Stay tuned, this ain't over by a long shot. Border Battle Royale In a dramatic legal showdown that could rival any courtroom thriller, the Biden administration didn't hesitate to play their ace card. Facing off against the Fifth Circuit's stubborn injunction, basically freezing everything in place, the administration sprinted straight to the U.S. Supreme Court like a legal marathon runner on Red Bull. Biden's legal eagles busting out emergency applications faster than you can say constitutional crisis. Their pitch? Hey, Supreme Court, lift that pesky injunction so we can do our job. And guess what? The Supremes didn't waste time either. They whipped up a tight 5-4 decision, barely making the cut, to give Biden the green light. But hold your horses, there's more. Justice Alito, the man with the emergency hotline to the Fifth Circuit, didn't just shrug this one off. He took the whole enchilada to the full court and bam, they stamped their approval faster than you can refresh your Twitter feed. Justices Thomas, Alito, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh were like, sure, let's ditch that injunction. Meanwhile, the others were throwing legal shade from their dissenting corner. Talk about a split decision that could rewrite the playbook on border battles. This ruling isn't just legal jargon. It's a pulse-pounding saga of power plays and high-stakes jousting over who calls the shots on border security. Texas vs. Uncle Sam isn't just a showdown in the Lone Star State. It's a blockbuster legal thriller with no shortage of twists and turns. The legal drama isn't over yet. With the Supreme Court's move, the stage is set for a legal clash of titans that could shape the future of border security measures. And you better believe the Biden administration isn't backing down anytime soon. But living in the United States all this time with this fear and uncertainty, we can fix that. And that's what I'm going to do today. They have to leave their families in America with no assurance that they'll be allowed back in the United States. Today I'm announcing a common sense fix to streamline the process for obtaining legal status for immigrants. Clash at the border. All right, so picture this legal tug of war like a heavyweight boxing match where every round counts. The Supreme Court, in a nail-biting 5-4 decision, threw out that pesky injunction the Fifth Circuit slapped on Biden's border plans. Justices Barrett and Chief Justice Roberts jumped in the ring with Uncle Sam, giving the feds the nod to start snipping wires along the Texas border. But hold your horses, this isn't a final bell, folks. It's more like a timeout in a heated game. The Supremes just hit pause on the lower court brawl to let everyone catch their breath. Meanwhile, Governor Abbott of Texas isn't sitting on his hands. He fired off a stern letter to Biden, waving the Constitution around like a legal war banner. Abbott's all about Texas flexing its muscles, citing self-defense rights and vowing to protect every inch of Lone Star land. Now, the plot thickens as the Fifth Circuit chimes in. They kick the case back down to the lower courts like passing a hot potato, giving them 60 days to dig up more dirt. So what happens next? Well, the federal district court dove headfirst into a fact-finding frenzy, debating whether to stick to the script or go off script with a brand new ruling. Drama, right? Biden's crew isn't wasting time. They're using every second of that 60-day countdown to line up their legal artillery. Picture them filing a motion to scrap the whole dang case, arguing Texas doesn't have the goods to back up their claims. Sovereign immunity? Check. Administrative Procedures Act jibber-jabber? Double-check. They're throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks, leaving Texas scrambling to defend its honor. This isn't just courtroom drama. It's a legal showdown where every move could rewrite the rulebook on border battles. With the clock ticking and the stakes higher than a Texas sunset, one thing's for sure, this isn't over till the final gavel drops. What is your timeline on, on finishing? I mean, Texas obviously is the, is the, is the biggest landmass that we have. In Texas, yeah. we've seen illegal immigration go down 75 percent 
while it's gone up in New Mexico, Arizona, and California. My estimation is it's going to take five months because in five months, we're going to have a new president, a president who will actually enforce the laws of the United States of America. Americans across the country, for one, they're angry. For another, they know this is Joe Biden's fault. Their city council is handing out taxpayer money given to them by their own citizens, and they're using that money not on their own citizens. Look, look at what's going on in New York and Chicago and so many other cities across the country. You, you have a revolt. And so naturally, their own constituents, whether it be in, they're angry, and rightfully so, because uh, their communities have been invaded by people who are committing crimes in their neighborhood. They know that there's a solution that they can vote in favor of, and that is uh, putting Donald Trump back into the White House. Legal showdown. Let me break it down for you. Texas isn't backing down from these legal showdowns anytime soon. Fresh off that Supreme Court 5-4 thriller, the Biden administration's on the offensive. They're gunning for a quick KO, aiming to slam-dunk Texas's case straight out of court. It's all about decisive wins and shutting down the opposition ASAP. But wait, there's more drama brewing down in the Lone Star State. Enter the SP4 law, a hot-button issue that's got everyone on edge. A three-judge panel in the Fifth Circuit is chewing over whether to slam the brakes with an injunction or let Biden's border policies ride. Odds are leaning toward Uncle Sam's favor, given how similar cases have played out. Now, here's the kicker. Despite the Supreme Court swooping in not once but twice, lower courts are still tiptoeing around these hot potatoes. Seems like no one's itching to take the bull by the horns and lay down the law once and for all. With controversy in the air thicker than Texas barbecue smoke, these cases are destined to boomerang right back to the Supremes sooner than later. So buckle up, y'all. This ain't just legal mumbo-jumbo. It's a high-stakes Texas I showdown over who calls the shots at the p With every twist and turn, one thing's crystal clear. Texas isn't folding, and the legal drama isn't over till the fat lady sings. Stay tuned, because you know this isn't the last rodeo in town. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.